Yeah, a note from Phil Steele on Twitter. This is a fascinating one. He writes that offensive line experience and cohesion is one of the most vital aspects for a good team and is often a tiebreaker for me when analyzing similar teams. If a team has an experienced offensive line, it is likely, I'm sorry, an inexperienced offensive line, it is likely to struggle during the season as the trench guys are the foundation for a team. Top 10 most experienced offensive lines in the country based on starts. Number one, Ole Miss. 222 career starts among the players in that offensive line room for the Rebels. After that, Oklahoma State with 214. Florida State with 190. Louisville, 172, Purdue, 165, Kentucky, 156, Iowa, 154, Nebraska, 152, Oregon, 144, Tulane, 143. There it is, boys and girls. Georgia's going to stink. <laughs> I'm actually going to podcast about that tonight because that, that's a really, it's a really interesting thing. It's, it's a good thing with, with a caveat, right? Because if we were just talking about Last year's Ole Miss, of, Ole Miss offensive line is all returning intact, and they have this many starts. Not to be disrespectful, but you wouldn't really celebrate that. You're like, well, starting experience is great, but it wasn't good enough. It's the portal guys that they need to work who also have a ton of starting experience. I mean, the, all four portal guys were multi-year starters at their previous stop, so – that that helps uh, inflate that number in a good way. But that's the the dynamic here is they, they, they have all those guys returning, and that's a great thing for depth. But that is not a great thing for ceiling. They need portal guys to hit to raise their ceiling on the offensive line. So a bunch of experienced guys, but it's not experienced at Ole Miss that they need to work at Ole Miss for 2024. It's very interesting. Yeah, but most of the experienced guys – that are from Ole Miss were starters on what was a pretty good offensive line. The issue prior to this year was there wasn't really much in the way of depth behind them that they trusted. And so I, you've got guys who have started a bunch of games for Ole Miss that, as you've said multiple times, are not going to be starters this year. And yet they are a year, year older, and they have experience starting games in the SEC. Right. What? What do you? What did I say that you disagree with? No, no, no. I'm I'm not disagreeing with it, anything that you said. What I did? No, I'm just messing with y'all. Um, yeah, th- but I, I, they they weren't a good offensive line last year. The the returners' value is depth. They were not good. Tulane whooped them up front, absolutely whooped them. Georgia embarrassed them. Alabama embarrassed them. This is a team in a program that is that has okay, playoff. Well, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. I'll listen to the whole Tulane got after them up front. That was pretty good defensive front from Tulane, but let, let's not pretend like that's the same thing as the SEC. But if the example is Georgia and Alabama whipped them up front, you, you lose me there because they kind of whipped everybody up front, those two did. But this is a team that has championship aspirations. Who, who gets in your way for a championship, Georgia and Alabama? But y'all are correct in that. Having guys who started SEC games, multiple SEC games, over the past couple of years as backups cannot ever be rationalized as a bad thing. No, it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah, they, 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 they definitely have the depth that they have not had in years past, where if you get an injury and somebody goes down, you're not, you're not relying on a true freshman or uh, you know, some guy who was a, a mid-three-star player. you got and, real experience there. And, hey, Dad, when you say in years past, you might mean ever. Yeah. Like, like I don't certainly in the last, like in the modern era, and for me the modern era is, you know, 1989 and forward. It's hard for me to think of a year where there was more depth on the offensive line. And had, even with Ole Miss's good teams over the last – 30, 35 years. What has the issue always been? It hasn't been frontline talent. There have been years where Ole Miss's first group, whether you're talking offensive line or defensive line or wide receivers or whatever, whatever position group you're talking about, first group was really good, like all SEC caliber good. 
but there was nobody behind him. And you're one injury away from it being devastating. Um, I don't know that no, ever is a really long time. It's very, very rare to see what happened in 2012 happen. Ever Ole might Miss be started, the right word. Yeah, I know. But but in that year where Ole Miss had so little margin for error on the offensive line, that was Hugh Freeze's first year as head coach at Ole Miss. They had the same five guys start all 13 games and basically avoided injury on the offensive line for the entire year. Somebody says um, that 03 offensive line with Ben Claxton, Doug Buckles, Cliff Woodruff, with Eli behind them was insane. Yes, it was a really, really good offensive line group in 2003. Didn't mention the best guy. But in guy, terms what, of a two deep. Wasn't Chris Spencer on that team? Chris Spencer was there. Yeah, that's the best guy on that line. They were good. Yeah. They were really good up front that year. I mean, Eli Manning's a super talented player, but you don't get to be the number one pick in the draft if you're on your back every every three plays. So, yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. Com- completely agree. Does it matter? To, so, so, obviously, Phil Steele looks at a lot of metrics. Like, returning experience is, has always been a big thing with Phil Steele, r- regardless of the position crew, group you're talking about. So, I think that does matter when you're talking about the offensive line. Should it be remotely concerning for Georgia, Alabama, LSU, Texas, Texas A&M, that they're not in that top 10 range of returning experience on the offensive line? The only thing I would say is it's kind of like FPI. Remember a few years ago where Mississippi State was really high in FPI because they had three starting quarterbacks on the roster? This is sort of the same thing. I mean, Texas, I think they returned four starters from last year who all played together at Texas. So would you rather have that or would you rather have the, the old Miss situation where you've got a lot of guys, but your starters are new guys and, and yeah. they're, you know, they haven't played together. That's they reasonable. haven't played in this system. So that's, that's, you know, I'm not saying Ole Miss is fudging the numbers or anything. Obviously this came from Phil Steele, but it is kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, almost like a misnomer. A yeah. the, the spin zone, if you're looking for a positive spin, is th- these aren't four guys that joined – in April or May or June. the All the new guys joined the offensive line room December or January. That They were all first portal window guys, yeah, so got they, they got spring. to go through yeah. spring together. That's, and that's, that's super important. Yeah. Especially with the line. I feel like a receiver, a running back, can come in late. They'll figure it out. Just get, get them in the open field. They'll figure it out. The linemen have to have that spring. Mm-hmm. They have to have it. State's the, sort of the yeah. same way. You know, state, probably five, maybe f- at least four new faces on the offensive line, but they got that spring together. They were all there in the spring. They got it Probably wasn't there one guy that was injured or they were expecting to come in that wasn't in that group that played in the spring game? I have to. I feel like there's one that – yeah, I I don't have my depth chart with me. It's tucked away in my office. Um, But, yeah, four or five new starters on the offensive line for for Mississippi State. But, you know, there's another kind of – dovetailing position groups that I think having that spring and summer matters for also, and it's quarterback and wide receivers. Learning tendencies, how guys like the ball thrown to them, receivers learning the way it comes out of a quarterback's hands. And for Mississippi State, with a new quarterback coming in, they had – a, that full off season with Blake Shapen going into the summer, going into the first year of a new system, and pretty much the entirety of the receiving core was there for the spring as well. Yeah, they, now, they didn't add a, a late what, transfer receiver. Right, but Whittemore was injured for yeah. much of the spring. So, but he was there. I mean, that's a piece that, you know, you're probably trying to work on he, through he the summer mental reps. and build that rapport. Oh, yeah, the old mental reps. Can't ever count those out. No. Is anybody still using the virtual reality thing that everybody was talking about a couple of years ago? You remember that? I do. Like, hey, we've got this virtual reality headset for the quarterback where he can, like, physically go through all his reps and see everything. I don't hear people talking about that anymore. 